Students, welcome back to part B of the BAP Lab number two, where we're actually looking at using Twitter, the Twitter uh, API to download the data and mess around with it in, uh, in Python. Now, for my students, you guys, I, I, I'll put, I, I put up the code so you guys have my keys. Um, like I said before, you guys should at this point have your keys. It's been long enough. Some of you guys, I think always, some of you guys have to wait like three, four days before you get approved. In the meantime, you could use my keys that I posted there. Now for my, let me hide this post on the code. Um, right, we want to import all these things, but let me set it up in a way so that you, I can hide my code, on, at least on the video. And as you can see, I have my four variables, API underscore key, API underscore secret underscore key, access token, access token secret. Now, above these lines, I'm just hiding it for the video purposes, I have my actual values that I grabbed. Actually, let me hide it. It's on the right side. I actually have my actual keys, right? And now you guys actually see my actual, uh, you know, the actual keys. Here, I just have it blanked out just for your purposes. I have it run, so I have the correct values ready to go. I just wanted to show you guys the variable name so you have some sort of context. Now, what we need to do is obviously, let's go ahead. Now, in your, for you guys, you guys are gonna have the uh, these variables with the right key values. So, I'm gonna have to do my import numpy, get that in there. My import pandas, get that in there. And now I'm going to import something new called pip. What is pip? Pip, ladies and gentlemen, oops, right? It's one of the file managers in Python that allows you to install libraries onto our computer. So basically, it's similar to how in our studio we would basically use the install feature. So pip does that for us, right? Using the pip command, that is how we install third-party libraries. So one of the libraries we have to install, obviously, the library is the one that Twitter made for their data, their database, to allow us to use it, right? So we're going to use their Python package or program they wrote, and we're going to install it onto our computer. So this is basically the way we do it, all right? In Spider, in Spider, this is how you would do it. Now, typically, what you would do is you would basically run this pip install command and you open up some sort of dos prompt, et cetera, et cetera, get some, some X term, et cetera, et cetera, do it there. But because we're doing directly in spider, right? I need to put this exclamation point there. What that exclamation point is basically saying to spider is, Hey, don't run this in spider, take this command and send it to the, the backend, uh, the backend, um, X term or, uh, window running spider right because you don't want to run this in spider this is not a spider command this is a spider this is a this is a, actually a pro a command for the python program running in the uh, behind the scenes in the actual computer to install this package so i'm going to go ahead first let me so i ran these three lines let me go ahead and run this and now to your right window you see for, in my case requirements already satisfied i already have it on my computer right for you guys, you're gonna see something else. Some of you guys, the PCs again, some of you guys are gonna see some weird questions like, oh, do you wanna do a, um, a hard install or a soft install or an easy install? Pick the easy install. Some will ask you, do you wanna recompile this stuff? No, we don't wanna recompile anything. Just take it easy, all right? Once I do this, because this is something dangerous, I'm gonna comment it out because I don't want this just roaming around my, uh, these pip commands, I don't want them in my running around in my code. Right, they can cause serious problems. So now we installed a third party package, right? And this is different than we do with NumPy and Pandas. NumPy and Pandas is preloaded in Anaconda. Twitter isn't. The Twitter package isn't. That's why I have to do the pip install. All right, from here, we are going to reference two of the libraries. So what's going on here? All right, we're importing. Now, we already installed the Twitter package. We talked about that using pip. Now, just like before, we want to use some of the libraries within, within that package. Once we do that pip install, we don't have to do it ever again. But every time we want to run the API code, obviously, just like with NumPy and Pandas, we need to import 
the libraries you want. But now what's happening is I'm using some different syntax here. So let me explain what the syntax here is, right? Uh, it's basically the same thing, but it allows some little more flexibility. So let me copy this in right here. All right. So notice I have the import part over here, just like in lines 19 and 20, right? And 21. Right, but now I'm not saying import Twitter as something like TW or import authorization as OU or OA or something like that. I'm now using this logic from Twitter import the capital T. So from lowercase Twitter, Twitter obviously is the uh, the lowercase T Twitter. That's what if you see here, that's what the package we've installed, right? And I'm saying from this package import this function within it, okay? as opposed to just doing import Twitter as TW, the lowercase one, and then doing TW.Twitter, right? You could do it as well. What this logic is saying from Twitter, import this, is now I can use this particular function without any kind of variable. See, I don't have to use some sort of variable like I do in P or PD, because now I'm saying, I'm explicitly saying, hey, import this particular function into the memory from this package. Import this particular function into memory from this package. It would be similar to how we have that array function in NumPy, right? So if I did something like from NumPy import array, right? And I run this, I can now use that array function, right? Just like this without using the NP, right? So hypothetically, if I did a equals array one, two, three, and I run it. Now I have an array, an A uh, variable, right? Just like I did before. And notice I didn't do, use the NP. That's what this from logic allows us to do, right? Now the reason we're doing it for Twitter is because I essentially, unlike NumPy and Pandas, where we use tons of functionality in there, I'm not going to sit there going line by line calling all the functions I want. I just use those variables. Here in Twitter, I'm just using these two functions, guys. I'm just going to use this big Twitter, big T Twitter, this big letter OA authorization, and everything else just comes from uh, everything just comes from uh, those packages at that point, right? So that's why I'm just going to use this from part. All right. So now we're going to use the those two functions that we just imported directly from the Twitter package to create our key and then to use our key to create a connection, all right? And then now we're gonna use that connection. That connection is what we use, all right? So let me copy and paste this. First, let me do this, let me create the key. And the key, ladies and gentlemen, right? Here will be this. This is a variable name. It could be anything you want. It just so happens I just chose a variable. I just chose this variable name that is just this function's name, just a lowercase, right? But again, this could be anything you want. Now, here, all right, I just have to tweak my code a little bit to match my variables over here. See that? I have to tweak my code to match my variables over here. All right, now, those four, let's call them serial identifications that we got from Twitter, we combine them within this function gotten from Twitter to create a key, our particular key to get into the database, right? Remember, all these social media sites, Twitter, Facebook, all this stuff, et cetera, et cetera, their web, we, we see, all we see is websites, but behind them, what are they? They're massive data lakes. What are data lakes? Uh, massive network of, of databases, ob both object-oriented and relational databases, servers, um, uh, servers and I think oh, some other things called um, eluding my mind uh, some other term I'm looking for whatever servers databases all distributed right to get access to that data system right that massive tremendous data system we need a key this is what creates our key so here I'm gonna make slight changes all right my first this must be in the precise order this is why I told you guys uh, please use these key names so that you don't get messed up with the order. All right. So firstly, I'm going to notice the first variable is access token. 
that's line 16. So here I'll put the underscore. All right, notice my third second parameters as access, access token secret. I need to put an underscore there. Um, again, I need to match up my variable names in lines 14 and 17, or whatever variable names you guys use. That third one is API key. Sorry, my splatter gets kind of slow because of this kite nonsense. I gotta really delete kite off this. This is kite's a nightmare. Sorry for any kite developers over there. Jeez, this whole thing's messed up. All right, excellent. So this thing's finally back. All right, sweet. All right, here now. Underscore for API key. And now for API secret key, I kind of ran out of space. I will have to do why is this not scrolling all the way to my right? That's quite annoying. Let me just minimize it. <laughs> Pardon me. So this one is going to be API underscore secret underscore key. All right. Now I'm going to run this. Oh, sorry. I didn't run this stuff. Eh. There. I ran 25, 26. I run this now. Oh, API secret key is not defined. Underscore. It's defined. I ran it before. It's there. Let me just make sure that I ran it before. I have to go above to my uh, lines 12 and above to run it. Okay, so I reran those lines. So let me go ahead and do this. And now it ran. Okay. So for you guys, again, I'm hiding my keys, but you guys can clearly see yours. So I have the authorization key now made. All right, the next step is now to use the key and enter Twitter and create some sort of gateway for us to use. All right, and now I'm using the Twitter function from line 25 that I, that I uh, called. All right, I'm passing the authorization into the authorization parameter right here. We give her a key, which is what we defined here in line 31. Again, that's a variable name. You can name it anything you want. And this, our gateway right here, our connection, this is basically our connection into Twitter. This can be anything you want as well. I just call it API. You can call it vanilla chocolate, whatever, whatever you want to call it. I run this now, and now I have no errors. So, so far, so good. Now, let's see if everything's working fine. All right. Before we do that, I want to show you guys uh, on your slides. Here is the, the website for all the Twitter libraries, right? If you go there, you're going to see multiple languages up there for all the different type of languages you can use to access the Twitter data. Under Python, you have all these packages. Check this out, right? All these packages you have. Uh, and these are all different type of API packages you can use to act using Python to access Twitter data. Um, I believe Tweepy is pretty popular, the second one. The one we are using, right, the one I chose to use is the plain vanilla one that is the basic one provided by Twitter, and it's the one that all these guys are pretty much built on top of anyway. Feel free to check these ones out. You can look at the documentation, see if you like it. I just use the plain vanilla one uh, because it serves our purposes, and they're all built off this anyway. Honestly, they're all built off it anyway, okay? So I just wanted to show you guys that, how many IPIs there are. Now, from here, this particular API we're using is for Twitter. But any kind of social media site or any kind of third-party company that you might be getting data from, they might provide their own API. One of the cool things, right, and they have their own documentation, their own functionality. So one of the cool things is if you use the help keyword and type in API right here, again, the variable name from line 32, and you process this, right, in your window over here in your console, you're gonna see all this stuff pop up. Oh, actually, what I'm gonna do is let me clear this out. I'm gonna clear out this window. 
I'm going to press the eraser, remove all variables. Uh oh. Do I want to do that? Uh, let me do no for now. So, whatever. So, I ran all this stuff, right? I did help API, and you see all these, these commentary coming up about that, about that key, that gateway to Twitter. It's kind of hard to see, but here they pretty much have all the basic functionality for that Twitter API. So what I can do is if you simply do right click it, right? Right click it and see this save as HTML, XML, click on that. And it's, it's going to ask you to open up a, you know, a folder in your computer. I'm going to choose the one for our class. I'll save it as um, Twitter commands. I save it, and now if you go back to your folder for this class, right there you will see an HTML file, Twitter commands. You click on this, and basically what happens here, if I can move this over for you guys, so you guys can see it. Right, what ends up happening here is you guys can now see everything we just saved from that console. So let me go scroll all the way down and you see basically all the ins and outs and everything I pretty much had was writing from before. It's all there. Right, and now from here, oop, let me hide that. This command, help API. Now you have basically all the commentary from when we ran that help command. It's right here at our fingertips. Right? It's, very, it's very easy how you get it from Spider. Let me zoom in a little bit. Right? And they show you the different functions here. Right? The minimalist yet fully featured Twitter API class, et cetera, et cetera. And here they give sort of giving examples of different functionalities they have. You have the we already did the Twitter command. We got the the t, this T handle kind of represents our API variable, because they use the Twitter function to get this, but we used our um, we called it API, they call it T here. And from here you can see all the features, statuses.home line, you can get your home timeline. Again, this some of the stuff won't make sense unless you guys use Twitter. Uh, get a particular friends timeline, uh, post stuff to your timeline, all right? Get your parameter ID, to use I, underscore ID, uh, we'll talk about this ID, there's, there's a concept of IDs in, in these Twitter feeds. We could update our statuses. We'll do that. You can send a direct message to somebody. You give the, you know, you can send a direct message to somebody's feed. Um, you can get all the members to a certain. Oh, this is new. You can also send images along with your tweets. They have all the stuff. Status updates. Right. So the whole bunch of functionality. We'll, we'll look at. We'll. We're going to use some of these right now, actually. Some of these we'll actually use. All right. They show you the cooler one. Where's the cooler one? Oh, yes, this one. We search actual tweets, right? That's one of the things that's pretty cool about this. So they basically have all these ready for us to go, right? So I wanted to show you guys how you can have access to that. And over here again on the slide, I show you how you do it. You do right click and then you do save as. Okay, and now what we want to do is we want to use some of the functionalities. So the first functionality we're going to do, all right, the first functionality I'm going to do in Twitter is basically I want to get what's trending in the world, all right, not the world, but I want to, get, I want to know what's trending in different locations. If any of you guys know that when you're tweeting on Twitter, right, they know where you are. Sounds creepy. They know where you are, right? They know which location you belong to. So through that, they can aggregate all those tweets by locations. So the first function we're going to use is called trends.available. Now, what's cool about this API is that usually when we use functions, we usually use, uh, you know, we usually do np.array or pd.dataframe. Here now, Twitter, they wrap functions within functions. So that's why you'll see me using dot multiple times. So in this case, in this case, we have, I'm going to create a new variable called t underscore LLC. 
And I'm going to say, hey, zoom in a bit bigger. Uh, call, obviously, our little connection thingy, was it, which is API, or whatever you guys name it. And now I want dot trends, right? I'm going to call this function dot trends. And within this function is another sub function. It's, it's not really a function. It's just another, another way they structure, um, they organize the functions within the packages is actually available and that's the actual function we want all right i run this line go here back to my variable exposure t lock very good and you see we have t lock right and let us view t lock this pops up what is t lock t lock is a bunch of dictionaries see how it's a dict is a bunch of dictionaries all right it's a bunch of dictionaries it's saying it's a bunch of dictionaries. But what is it really? All right. If we were to type in tlock down here into my console, you guys have to do this yourself because mine's too small to see. You see this nifty little dictionary kind of object, right? Dictionaries on top of dictionaries with these squiggly braces and these keys and these values, et cetera, et cetera. All right. What actually is being given to us is we are being passed something called a JSON object. What is a JSON object? A JSON object actually stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's a lightweight data interchange, for, um, data interchange um, object that allows uh, humans to read. It's, it's not actually, I hate to say it, it's easy for humans to read and write. It's actually uh, difficult for <laughs> humans to, easy to read and write. But we use code to basically put data into this JSON kind of object. And it's easy for machines. To to basically parse and generate. Um, the concept of JSON is what? It replaced XML as basically the way we send data across the internet. The JSON object, it was you know, obviously born out of JavaScript. It's just an incredibly efficient way to store data and pass it through the internet, or even within a corporation itself, a large corporation that wants to pass around massive information back and forth. Excel files are inefficient, they take up too much memory, whereas a JSON object is highly efficient and has a smaller footprint. And that's why it's so popular now, both in the internet world and within these large corporations, to use this format, this JSON object, to pass data back and forth to each other. All right? And this is how Twitter does it. And, ba and a lot of APIs, these, these third-party uh, social media companies that have all these APIs, they, they, they either use JSON objects or they're, they're, they're moving over to using these JSON objects to pass data back and forth. Because it's less strain on their system, it's less strain on our system, honestly, right? JSON is built on two structures. It's a collection of name value pairs, again, like a dictionary. Uh, again, in really various languages, this is, this is done using a concept of an object, record, struct, dictionary, hash table, key list. These are like the key, the, the, the different kind of data containers that are used in different languages to realize this collection, right? Uh, it's also an ordered list of values. Again, this is realized by some languages, array, vectors, lists, or sequences, right? So this is essentially what a JSON object is. Now, what do we, sp oh, I got a typo here, sorry. Right, so how are we, we have this, how do we use it? How do we use it? Well, we want to normalize the JSON object into a what? A table. How do we do it? Very, very easy. So easy in Python. I showed some C++ programmers this, they were like, Jaws were like, what? I was like, yeah. Right? So first things first, I need to import a new function that we've never used. We're going to specifically, we're going to use the from, the from technique again and download this particular, oh, here we go, let's fix this. Download a particular pandas function called json underscore normalize. Oh, All right, json normalize. I run this, and now I have this new function called json underscore normalize. That function from the pandas library, okay, that allows, let me copy this, That allows, I should really stop using underscores for my slides. 
you know, transfer nicely. All right, so you simply just pass this JSON object you got from Twitter or any other API you're using. You run it. And what happens is this new object df underscore loc is created. And looky, looky what it says it is in my, in your spider. It's a data frame. Click on it. What do you see? Ah, okay. What happened now? That JSON object was now converted into a pandas table. You see that? That JSON object was now converted into a pandas table in all its glory. Let's take a look at some, I think this is kind of small. Let me see if I have it posted here. Yes, yeah, kind of bigger. Look at some of the columns they have. Index, again, index, it's a pandas table. Country, country code, name. That name column is basically the city within a country where tweets are being aggregated, right? Parent ID is basically, this links up to which country it belongs to. So for the US, that's probably its parent ID. Place type code, these are codes for what kind of, uh, is it a city, it's a what? Name, in this case, they're, they're calling it a town. That's kind of, kind of stretching it. New York City over here is not a town. URL is basically how it would be visualized in Twitter. Uh, the URL for this particular location and the woe ID. Okay, the woe ID basically stands for where on earth ID, where on earth ID. And this is basically the same syntax as uh, Yahoo created these woe IDs to basically um, identify certain locations. And Twitter uses Yahoo's right here in this URL, these woe IDs to, to identify these certain cities around the world. All right. So that's the table we pretty much get, uh, get back. It's a pandas table. And you guys know how to jam with a pandas table, right? You guys know. So this is the great thing about this, um, this lab is it's, focusing, it's, it's reaffirming your um, abilities to mess around with the pandas table. All right. So, I mean, my first question for you is, hey, which country has the most cities being tracked? Can you answer that question? Yeah, it's called the value count. You guys can definitely answer this question, this question. And as you know, we have a column called country right there, right? We have the column country. So I basically want to do this. Right, I'm picking the, using the if lock is now a pandas table. I'm taking the country column. And on that country column, I'm calling the function value underscore counts. I run this, looky, looky, all these results. I just go to the top. And of course, the United States has the most results at 64. So 64 of the cities or locations in the United States, Twitter is tracking those aggregations, all right? Twitter is tracking what's being tweeted in those locations, all right? United Kingdom is second, Mexico is third, India comes in as fourth, Japan fifth, then Russia, then Brazil, then Korea, uh, Germany, Turkey, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, question for you guys: Why is Mex well Mexico, the United Kingdom is because uh, I guess they're fairly they're not that large countries, but they're close to America. Why is India up there in fourth place? India has about a billion people, right? So it has it's a large country uh, with a lot of locations. What's country is missing there that should be ahead of India. China. China is bigger than India. It has more of a population than India. It's wealthier than India. Why isn't it up there? We don't see it. It is because in China, they don't allow Twitter. That's why. They have, I think own, they have their own uh, app they use there called Weibo or Weibo. It's because the Chinese government you know, they don't have access, they don't, uh, they want them to be able to monitor social media, who's posting what, and Twitter's like, nah, we're not going to allow that. So they're like, all right, cool, we're not going to allow you. <laughs> all right, so China, in China, Twitter's not allowed. They have something else called Weibo. All right, so this basically shows all the value counts. Uh, you know, how many cities are, have their own um, uh, trending information within a country. Now, let's say we want to search for a particular city in the partial word. Let's say I want to find out if New York City exists. How do I do this, right? Right, how do I do this? Now, I'm basically gonna be looking for 
anything that basically says New York. But let's say I'm not sure how to spell New York City or I want to see all the cities that start with a name and how do I do that? Well, we're going to do some slicing and dicing like we did before. But now I'm going to show you and introduce a new package in Pandas that you guys have never, that we haven't talked about that's extremely powerful. It's called the STR package, right? Stands for string. And the way it's used is just like we do before, we, you know how we would do dot sum, right? We would, call, we, would, we would call, first of all, the table. And then within the square brackets of the table, we call a particular column. And then we would call like the sum function on that column and add up all the values. Well, now I'm calling this function called str. And this is more, again, like a package instead of a function because within this package, now I'm calling other functions. And there's so many powerful functions in str, it's amazing what you can do with it, right? One of the functions we're going to use is called contains within str. And what contains basically does, it goes through every value in the name column. Remember, in, um, in our Twitter, in this table, or in our, in our df underscore lc column table, we have a function called name right there. And that name is basically the cities of the world that Twitter is tracking uh, what's being tweeted. All right. So within basically what this command is saying is that within that column of name, the cities pretty much, we want to select all the rows where the city names contain the word new. That's what's happening here, guys. That's what's happening here. We are not. We are now. Now, not just selecting a specific value we're looking for in that column. No, we are now selecting any rows that have a value that contains the letters N E W, and it is case sensitive, right? N E W case sensitive. And so when I do this, right? I do this. I store the results in this other variable called df and ew. Oops, go up here. So annoying. Fixed quote, fixed quote, fixed quote, fixed quote. I run this df new. All right, and it's a table, right? What is it? It's a table. I can literally um, just click on this, and I get this table back, right? So what is DF new? It's a table. Why is it a table? Because I just filtered. All I did was I filtered the, my original pandas table, DF underscore LOC, for just the rows that meet this criteria right here, right? And when you, when you do that, you'll see you get this table back like this, all right? In this case now, what I'm doing in DF new, what am I doing here, guys? You see a double bracket, calling this column, calling this column, close bracket. What am I doing? Out of that table, DF new, I'm selecting just two of the columns. I'm selecting just two of the columns. What am I selecting? The name column, which is the cities, and the woe ID. So five rows came back. And then out of those five rows, I said, let me visually select these two columns. Newcastle, I mean, name and woe ID. And now we can basically see out of all of the um, cities that are being checked for what's trending, only five have the word NEW in it. All right, Newcastle, New Haven, New Orleans, New York, and New Zealand. I want to care. I care about New York. So using this DF new table, I could use, I could do this from the DF new table, or I could do it from the original DF underscore OCT table. It doesn't mean doesn't matter. I want that WO ID. I want this. All right, how do I get it? Slicing and dicing. All right, slicing and dicing. So here I'm going to grab that ID and I'm going to stick it in this variable called NY. All right, I'm going to stick it in that variable called NY. All right, and this should be a re this should be a refresher from the last lab, right? I'm selecting all the rows from the column name where the value is exactly in New York. And I just want the column and woe ID. Again, we're using LOC. This is why I can put the column name in there. I run this, right? And I run the variable NY. And if you look at the variable NY, look at it, right? Right off the bat, it has its value and its index number 373. 
is and why a number? All right? Use the type function and see what we're dealing with here. Now, for my spider students, you can see right off the bat, because it says it right here, it's a series. I type this, and it literally says pandas accord a series. NY is a series. Even though we selected just one row and just one column, the value still comes back as a series. All right, the value still comes back as a series. All right. Now, this, if I were to use this variable, because now what I want to do, guys, is I want to use that woe ID into another function within trends called place. If you remember the first time we used trends, it was to see what's available. And now I want to use another function within trends, api.trends, called place, that now is going to give me what's trending in that place. Notice the parameter is actually not ID, it's actually underscore ID. It's just something Twitter does. I don't know why they put the underscore before it, but that's the way they do it, all right? And then after the equals, we put the woe ID in there. But the problem is, when I run this line, copy it and run it, the problem is that when I run this line, and for any of you guys following along, you will see you get an error. For you guys following along, you'll see this, this is an error. You're going to get an error, right? Why? Because when Twitter wrote this function, this, this, this function for us to use, it explicitly wanted a number, a row ID, an integer, which is a row ID, to be placed here. What type of, what, did we place the integer in there? We didn't. We placed a series in there. Within that series is my value that's an integer. You see, you guys have to understand the concept of data containers, what the different types of data containers, and how we use those data containers, especially when you're using other uh, third-party functions and packages. Here, they want that number, whatever that number is within NY. I think it's 245 but NY itself is a series, it's not a number. The numbers is within the series. So how do we get it? Do you guys remember? Now this is a refresher. What is a series, guys? My question to you is, what is a series? A series is a NumPy array with indexes, right? It's a NumPy array with indexes. All right, cool. So if I do, how do I get the array part? I do NY.values, right? You now see you got an array. Okay, cool, can I do this? Right now I got the number, don't I? So I'll just do ny dot values. Nope, you still get an error. Why do you get an error? Because ny dot values, even though it's just just one value in it, it's a array. Right? It's an array. First of all, I don't know why this thing is giving me this error. So, right. So if I do, if you do type, again, a type function comes in really handy. Ny dot values, right? and I run it, it's explicitly telling you, hey, this is a NumPy array, man. So that's why it gives you an error. Okay, cool. The NumPy array, unlike RStudio's um, arrays, it's a data container that holds numbers, or whatever, strings, alphanumerics, whatever. The number we want, the number that this function needs is within that array. Okay, cool. How do I get that number from that array? Remember, there's only one value in there. How do we get it? Bracket zero. And when you do that, now you guys see you get a cool output of a nice single number. And in fact, if I use the type function now, in here, and I run it, what does it tell you it is now, guys? It's an integer. It's an integer. And that is now why, if I grab this, and now replace that NY with this, I run it, right? And now I got no error. 
Now I got no error because now I gave it a number. This is something you guys need to understand, especially when you're doing data analytics and data science because you're in the mess with all the whole concept of data analytics and data science is you're using existing data within databases. You might be using data from like cell sheets. You'll be using data from third party APIs. You have to make sense of what's coming at you and what it is, right? To use it properly. So this didn't give us an error, but before we proceed, before we proceed, I want to show you something else. All right, if you go back to line 95, I mean 45, go back to line 45. Here, I use the, um, I use conditional logic to find uh, the row and the ID I wanted, right? Now, we know from our slide, actually, let me see, let me confirm it. If I type in DF new over here, right, the table I created before, that just out to five rows. Oh, let's see, can I make this bigger? Let's see, give me more space. Ah, it's, it's, it's not showing me the whole columns. Okay, so if I do, let me do this. Let me do DF new bracket bracket from before. Um, I want the name column and I want the woe ID column. It's not showing me that. So now let me run this. So now when I run this over here, guys, just like I did in my slides, you have the just the name column and the YD column. We can see it clearer. New York has an index of what? 373. That's the index name. Now I want to show you guys something up here in line 58. I'm going to create a new variable called NY2. And this time I'm going to select that woe ID not using logic. I'm going to directly put in the woe ID value. I mean, I'm sorry, the index value, which is 373. If you guys remember, LOC does it by indexes, does slicing by indexes. I LOC does it by positions. In this case, I'm going to 373 index, and I run this. All right? And I create a variable NY2. Now, let's run the type function on NY2. Right before when you did NY, the NY function in uh, line 45, that was a series, right? Now if I do NY2 here and you run it, what is that? It's an integer. What just happened? Why was it that in line 45, I got back a series, okay? I, it was just one row I got, one row and one column. But in line, 50, line 58, I get an actual number. When you do the selection, okay, when you do the selection by one index value, just one and one column, it'll directly go in and give you that exact value. That's what happened. And see, in this case, NY2 over here, let me copy this. Let's call this NY trend 2, right? Instead of putting ny.values bracket zero, whatever, I did directly just put in ny2. You'll notice you got no errors because ny2 is an integer. When you used a precise index and a precise column, you will get that variable directly back from the cell. That's the difference. See, that's a little nuance here in pandas. That's a little nuance in pandas when you're using the LOC function. Anytime you use logic, you're getting a series back, even if it's just one row and one column. Right? If you're going to get the actual value back, you have to use directly, you have to use the actual index and the column name. Okay? So from here, we have NY trend. Okay? So you might want to rewind and just follow that back again. It is a little weird. But let's go ahead and use New York Trend now. If I type in New York Trend here, what do I see? All right, we have both. You can use either or if you want. I'll just use New York Trend. Oh, yes, that's right. Everything that comes back from me from that Twitter API is going to be a JSON object. What do I need to do? I need to convert this into a table. I'll call this, what do I call it here? I didn't want that. All 
Alright. Alright, hopefully this is still recording. Hopefully you guys can still see you guys can see this part. Okay. So from here, 